Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, we're going to talk about the Mass Monster Training Evolution Pyramid or why you shouldn't train like a mass monster. Before we get into that topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. All right, I got this fancy graphic up here, and we're going to talk about this today. A mass monster. We're not just talking about Mr. Olympia level type of stuff. We're talking about natties that are close to their potential or have a lot of mass as well. And I'm going to explain to you kind of why you shouldn't try to emulate or train like someone that has a lot of mass because the thing is lifters kind of go through stages of evolution they start out at the same place they go through these certain steps and they end up at an end place that's completely different from how they trained at the beginning so i'm going to dive into this a little bit but know that if you try to emulate the training of somebody that is an advanced lifter you're trying to train like them after they've been through personal changes, training evolution, exercise swaps to fit injuries and preferences, so on and so forth. So let's dive into things. The Mass Monster Training Evolution Pyramid or why you shouldn't emulate how a seasoned lifter trains now. Okay, so all of us build a base on the basics, right? You see this over and over again. We know what the basics are. They're what we're talking about on this channel. Consistency and training, consistency and nutrition, a reasonable exercise selection, a, a program that fits your, you know, as far as frequency, a program that fits your needs and your time and all that kind of good stuff. Progressive overload, training hard, et cetera, et cetera building a base on the basics, right? This is how it goes. Everybody's in that bottom platform, they're in that bottom foundation and they're getting after it. Slowly over time, these lifters will see an improvement in strength. They start to get stronger in time as they work hard, as they chase progressive overload. Strength is improving and the overall stress on their body becomes greater and greater and greater with time. Training intensity becomes greater and greater with time. In the middle stage here, we have quality mass, but the body's starting to feel beat up. This is when you're starting to probably get more around, I don't know, just pulling a random percentage out of my ass, 80% of your natural potential, right? Or you have a lot of mass. Let's not just toss out random percentages because I don't want to create rules. But at some point, if you have quality mass, there's a good chance you're going to start to feel beat up. Most lifters will start to feel beat up as they approach that advanced stage if they don't make changes. So what happens is along the process of, of doing progressive overload of of building mass we go to stage four lifters start to evolve their training to reduce punishment this is super this is super common you see it every day a lifter will get to a pretty darn big strength plateau or not plateau it's strength level and they'll start to change out exercises or they'll start to beat up or start to change how they train to reduce that overall punishment. Maybe they reduce the frequency. Maybe they reduce how heavy they're training. Uh, maybe they're benching 315 pounds and they move down to 215 by three by 10 or whatever to reduce the punishment. Whatever the case is, a lifter will evolve his training to reduce that punishment. If you get to five to 10 years into training and you've been training for progressive overload and you've been grinding away because that's what it takes to put on a lot of mass, you're going to start to feel punished eventually. And whether they do it directly or indirectly, more advanced lifters, particularly muscle building, we're not necessarily talking about power lifting here, will evolve the training to reduce punishment. Power lifters obviously do that as well. They just do it in a different way. Now, at the end stage, the top of our pyramid the lifter has a final form program. It's not the final destination, right? They're, they're still going to continue to evolve their training, but their program looks far different from how it looked at the base when they were building their base. So they started out with the base building, 
and then their strength improved, their body started to feel beat up, they evolved their training to reduce the punishment, and now they have at the top of the pyramid a final form program that doesn't really look like how they train to build 80% of their mass. And this is the important point. And I want you guys to stop and listen to this point. It is so important. How an advanced lifter trains now isn't usually how they train to build their base. Let me repeat, how an advanced lifter trains now usually isn't how they train to build their base. So if you're trying to have a body like them, if you're trying to train like them and you wanna emulate their program now, their program is from five to 10 years of personalized exercise selection. Maybe they don't like easy bar curls. Maybe they like barbell curls. Maybe they don't like Penley rows. They swap it out for Yates rows. You don't have to emulate their their um, exercise selection, their program, their set and rep scheme, even their frequency. Some of this is built on trying to reduce punishment. Some of it's built on um, just trying not to, you know, tr based on injury history. So, Ignore how they train now and ask yourself, how did they train back in the day? I'm going to leave you guys with one big example. If you are familiar with bodybuilding, Mr. Olympia, Frank Zane was basically the king of aesthetics, right? Frank Zane. I got to interview him, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. We did a phone interview for when I was at Muscle and Strength. And Frank was kind of a fluff and pumpy type of guy. Everybody knew him to be a muscle feely guy, you know, muscle, a mind muscle connection and fluff and pump. That's kind of how everybody knows Frank. When I talked to Frank, Frank told me that he built his base on what was called the odd lifts. Okay. The odd lifts. What are the odd lifts? Frank said back in the day, they really didn't, uh, they really didn't call power lifting lifts. Uh, um, bench squat and deadlift. They didn't really call them powerlifting lifts. They called them the odd lifts. So Frank said he built his base basically on heavy compound movements, barbell movements, a lot of focus on barbell and dumbbell, uh, heavy compound movements. He told me his strength levels, I don't recall them, but they were very respectable. Certainly Frank wasn't necessarily chasing strength, but he ended up with a very respectable degree of strength. And then as he evolved his training, he kind of moved away from that and went to fluff and pump. Now I'll tell you guys a final note. Once you become an advanced lifter, an advanced muscle, you're after muscle building here, we're not dealing with power lifting. Once you become an advanced lifter, it's very easy to maintain mass. So if you see your favorite lifter swapping out a big compound movement for something that is a little bit different, that doesn't mean you should do it. It's really easy to maintain mass, and that lifter is in a, a refinement stage. So he might be scratching out the last few pounds of his glory, right? So ignore those swaps. Stick to the meat and potatoes taught here on the Massive Iron Channel. So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.